when I was teaching you about welded and riveted joints, I told you that in the design of these welds, whenever we are doing the stress analysis, we firstly need to identify what different types of stresses are possible in that joint. And then what to do? Apply the simplest formula that you know. Stress is equal to internal load by area. Right? And you will get the answer. The same thing we are going to do for the bolted joints. But it is way more interesting for bolted joints than it was for riveted and welded joints. And the reason why I am calling it, it, it as interesting is... Uh, Obviously, because every year question comes in gate from this topic, but the concept required to solve these questions are not known to majority of the students correctly. Even if they are solving the previous year questions correctly, they don't know what concept lies behind that. And if a little bit tricky question comes or a little variation uh, is present in the question, I think that majority of the students won't be in a state to answer that because this concept is not taught in majority of the sources available. Look, the types of stresses that can act in a bolted joint are two. Firstly, I have shown here tensile stress. You can see that. Here what we are doing? Here I have given an example of a hook, of a crane hook, which is used to lift the weights, right? And this is bolted to some support. In this case, what will happen? Whatever weight will be acting, it will act along this axis, right? So in this case, the cross-sectional area of the bolt will be subjected to tensile stress. So this is one type of load which can act, one type of stress that can uh, get generated. Second type of loading is shear, where shear stress will be present in the cross-sectional area of the bolt. Here if you see that two plates, if they are applied with such loads which are moving them like this, then this cross-sectional area here, this will be sheared, right? So shear stress will be acting on the cross-sectional area. These are the two types of stresses that are majorly will be acting in these bolts. Now what expression to use for them? I have told you the simplest expression that we know. In, case, in this case, normal stress is going to act. So this is equal to by cross-sectional area. And here, shear stress is going to act. So that is also equal to load divided by area. Now the trick is what area to take. These things are very unknown. That what stress will be there, normal stress, shear stress. The load applied we also know in both the cases. But what area to take. This is a major confusion among uh, aspirants because... Unlike other types of joints, here you have more than one type of diameters. One more, hence, more than one type of areas are possible. The area which is decided by the major or nominal diameter that you need to take or you need to take the pitch diameter or you need to take the core diameter which is also called as minor diameter. This is a major source of confusion because whichever question has been asked in gate, it mentioned that determine the maximum stress. Almost every question that has been asked in gate, it mentioned determine the maximum stress. Now, whenever you see the term maximum, it comes to your mind that if stress needs to be maximum, then area needs to be minimum. That is why we will take core diameter. This is the mindset or the thought process of majority of aspirants, right? And this thought process is correct, but not for both the cases. This thought process is correct for specifically this case because here the load P which is being applied is acting throughout this section, right? It is acting in unthreaded as well as threaded region. In both the regions, this load is getting uh, distributed and hence when you need to decide the maximum stress, then the minimum area which is available in the zone where the load is acting that you need to take. And that is the area defined by core diameter. So here you can simply take it as pi by 4 core diameter square. And you will get the answer. Whatever question has asked you, you simply have to use this expression. Coming to this one, this is where the interesting part begins. If you look at this particular diameter which I have shown, if load P and B will be applied like this, you can see that 
the shear plane or the shear area is going to lie in this part which is unthreaded in the shank part where it is unthreaded and the diameter here is not the core diameter but it is the nominal diameter now some of you may say that it is nominal diameter because in the diagram you have drawn it like this what if that the threaded part was extending here up to this point and here also threaded part was present then nominal diameter won't be the diameter at that part right this thing may come to your mind that is why you need to understand this design concept that whenever we are designing these bolts nuts and bolts for shear for shear i am saying then the ideal design is that design when at the shear area you do not have thread i am repeating it that whenever you are making a good design then a good design in case of bolted joints then the shear area should have unthreaded part of the shank and not the threaded part this is the safer or the ideal design for it just like we try to take the minimum diameter to make a safe design like in this case even if you wanted to take this value of diameter the nominal value of diameter but that will not be a good thing to do because you always underestimate the strength of the component you always take the smaller dimension whenever you are trying to do calculation for deciding the critical value right but if you look at this case here you can see that there will be some confusion whether to take this one or this one when question has not mentioned anything clearly and if you pick any previous year question no question gives you a clear diagram like this so you will not be in a state to de determine whether this diameter unthreaded diameter is uh, you know coming in the shear area or the shear plane is lying in the threaded part you won't be knowing it so what to do as i have clearly told you that ideal design or safe design is that design when unthreaded part is in that shear area hence doing the calculation of shear stress you have to take the nominal diameter or the major diameter even if the question has asked you to determine the maximum stress in gate no question has been asked yet from this all the questions which have tested this concept have been asked from the case of shear stress only and almost every question was having this term determine the maximum stress you have to use the major diameter or the nominal diameter only to determine the maximum stress don't think that question mentioned that maximum stress is to be determined so we will take the core diameter that is not true because shear area does not lie in the threaded part it lies in the unthreaded part only now if still you have any confusion you will be having confusion because even some of the you know major sources available to us have given different answer to the same previous year question some consider core area some consider a nominal area hence students are confused that is why it is important for you to understand what i just told you and in case you have any doubt and confusion regarding this or you are not confident in applying this don't be under confident just simply apply the concept that i have told you if gate ask any such question and if in case gate gives a answer different from this one you can directly contact me i will give you enough proofs to challenge that and then you can get the answer for that question because in gate you have this facility where you can challenge the question right so challenge the answer given by the iits and if they uh, find it credible enough if the sources that you provide are credible enough they will accept uh, this and they will make the necessary changes in the marks so don't worry at all i have enough credible sources to establish what i told you which will definitely be accepted so just go um, forward with what i told you and one more thing i would like to add here that in some of the uh, sources and books you will find the empirical relationship between the nominal and core dia the nominal diameter and core diameter are different places they are related by 0.8 or they will write that core diameter multiplied by 0.84 will give you nominal dia these things you do not have to use in gate at all always answer conceptually in gate do not run behind these empirical relationships to answer any of the question asked in gate related to bolted joints 
okay